June 1812, 30 years after Britain's humiliating defeat in the American Revolution, the upstart nation draws battle lines again. America declares war on the greatest power on earth. The Second War of Independence begins. The War of 1812. Now, 200 years later, the inspiring stories of its everyday heroes are finally told. December 26, 1812. The Royal Navy blockades the Chesapeake Bay and launches a land assault, a series of raids into Maryland. One British commander will proclaim that the time has come for a frolic with the Yankees. It seems he's misjudged his adversary. The Cavalier invaders encounter an unlikely army, united under a common cause, defending their own hearths and harbors. People like Irish immigrant John O'Neill. On May 3rd, 1813, O'Neill single-handedly defends his village of Haver de Grace, Maryland from a brutal British attack. Just three days later and 20 miles southeast, Kitty Knight uses the resources at hand to repel the invaders from Georgetown. She charms the British commanders in despairing her home and those of her neighbors. On July 4th, 1813, Revolutionary War hero Joshua Barney of Savage, Maryland develops a brilliant strategy to break the British chokehold on Chesapeake Bay. On the bay, manning the revolutionary clipper ships designed in Baltimore is African-American George Roberts. He defends the waterways along with the infamous Captain Thomas Boyle. The British call Boyle a crazy American privateer who won't take no for an answer. That same summer, a Baltimore seamstress hoists a sewing needle as her sword. Baltimore seamstress Mary Pickersgill accepts the challenge to sew a flag so big it will serve a warning to the British ships when they dare approach Baltimore Harbor. It's her flag that gallantly streams through the night above Fort McHenry in September of 1814 during the Battle of Baltimore. It moves Francis Scott Key to pen the words that become our national anthem and inspire remarkable acts of courage that repel the British and help America win the war. In the 200 years since the War of 1812, Maryland has not forgotten those who fought for her freedom. Throughout the state, there's a trail of reminders that local history is a national story. Every century, Maryland puts on a great event to remember the war heroes. In 1914, there is a statewide centennial celebration. A book tells the story of Maryland's role in the war. Residents who help with the celebration are rewarded with a certificate of participation. Thomas Edison, one of the inventors of the motion picture, produces a silent film documenting Francis Scott Key's creation of the Star Spangled Banner. Now, the bicentennial celebration of the War of 1812 is on the horizon, and it will be grander than any before. It all begins in 2012. Dozens of foreign nations will join the festivities. Opsail and the U.S. Navy will lead a parade of tall ships and gray hulls. The United States Navy is going to be here in numbers and in enthusiasm, we're going to be in the skies above you and in the seas around you. We have 330,000 of America's finest wearing this uniform. And they're going to be a big part of this. And they're going to be the visible, tangible representations of the tie between what the sailors did in 1812 and what the sailors will be doing in 2012. So be part of it. Find a way to be a part of it. 
but also find a way to make this heritage real for our fellow citizens. I think a lot depends on it. I hope you do too. As long as we remember the unlikely combatants of 1812, their stories inspire us in all areas of our lives, both patriotic and practical. It is one of the ways that civic and business leaders can show the state how strongly they feel about where they live and what they do. It could create some very significant tourism into Maryland. What I would say to Maryland business leaders is that this is a tremendous opportunity for us to market Maryland, for us to promote Maryland, and for us to talk about the ongoing story of Maryland. While the story of Maryland is ever-changing, the state's dedication to its proud history remains constant. Whenever I visit Fort McHenry, I'm always inspired. You look up there at the, at the Star Spangled Banner, you think about what happened there. People who didn't even have a federal government to back them up, in essence, put their own lives on the line and said, no, we're drawing our line in the sand here. And the country we carry is in our heart, and the place where we live it is here in our city of Baltimore. And we are not surrendering. We are not going to be turned back. I find that story very, very inspiring. We are here today not simply to pay tribute to those patriots who founded our nation in Philadelphia or defended it in Baltimore, but to take up the cause for which they gave so much. What's required is a new declaration of independence. This is what I believe, Baltimore, but you made this belief real. You proved once more that people who love this country can change it. 